going on everybody it is your favorite on Timo and we are back for another episode review of love after lockup this is season 2 episode 37 blinded by love before we get into the review if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel don't forget to let me know what you think about this video give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content um Couple quick church announcements. Y'all like my hair? Dion did it. Mm hmm She's my braid lady. She is over at J. Andre's here in Austin, Texas at 1030 Norwood Park Suite 310. I believe that's what it is. When you go there, tell them most sent you. She has been doing my braids for forever. Y'all see how she freaked the shit out of this? Mm-hmm. Did the hell out of my hair. Yes, love it, baby. Also, if you are not following me on my social medias, please do so. Show enough appreciate ya. I am on Instagram. What is my Instagram? Moyo512. Twitter is NikkiShawn512. And then I have a Facebook like page for this YouTube channel. It is Mohanbone TV. Um, this episode of Love After Lockup was very boring. It was not given a whole lot. It was real, real uneventful. Um, I'm on my second glass of Moscato, so hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you, so let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all, so let's start off first with um, Cheryl and Josh. So Cheryl's sister, Lacey, she is coming there to visit. She has not seen her since Cheryl left to go get Josh, and she's been up there for a couple of weeks. You know, she's going to be there for a while where he is so they can somewhat get established before she comes back, right? Now, as we know, Sister Lacey is a correctional officer. She don't like Shane. I mean, not Shane. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. She don't like Josh. She don't fuck with Josh. Don't want nothing to do with Josh. Thinks that Josh is using her sister. And as soon as he gets what he wants, he gonna get on his feet and he gonna dump her ass. That's what she's thinking, right? So, um... Sister ends up coming. She goes to see the hotel that Cheryl has been living in since she's been there. And, of course, she got her nose turned up and all that because she ain't happy about nothing. And, um... She's asking her sister what Josh's goals are. And Cheryl is saying that, you know, Josh wants to get his driver's license, that, you know, all the money that he's making right now is supposed to be him, into him going into his driver's license. And that he wants to do something better for himself and that he wants to do this, yada, yada, yada. Sister is younger than her, I believe, but sister was spitting some game to her. She was like, look here, I've heard nothing so far but about him, 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 what the hell it is that he want to do. What the hell is it that you want to do? Because you need to get your shit together. You you got kids to think about three kids right now that are staying with your mom and daddy because you out here with this convict trying to make things work and he on house arrest he can't do a damn thing but she's trying to tell him how much she loves josh how you know as soon as he can he's going to start contributing and and holding his weight and holding his own this that and the other but like i said sis is spitting some game on her she's like look bitch you need to get your own shit together while you out here worried about this dick Later on, they end up going and having dinner, right? It's Cheryl and Josh and his sister. Now, this is the sister's first time meeting Josh. She ain't too fond of him, like I say, off the rip. Soon as he sits down, down, they all sit down. Sis asks them, you know, straight up, are you going to be paying for this? And Josh is like, hell, y'all going to be paying for this, bitch. What you thought I wasn't fit to fucking do? You want some $50? Bitch, get you some $50. I like that about Josh. He was ready for her ass. But, you know, he's a con man like this, so he quick, quick, get on his feet. He probably got Cheryl's card. She probably slipped it to his ass when she, uh, sis wasn't looking, so he can be ready for it like he finna pay for the shit any doggone way, right? Afterwards, sis goes right in to ask him, what the hell is you locked up for? Josh like, goddamn. Well, I did get locked up for bank robbery and sis's bank robbery. And sis is like, damn. Damn, that's it. And he was like, damn, can it be anything bigger than that? I was thinking the same thing. Like, bitch, what you was thinking he was finna say? Goddamn child molesting or something. I mean, you know, we don't want that, but still, like, what what in the hell? So they sit down, they having dinner, and Lacey is going in and drilling Josh, drilling his ass hard. And Cheryl starts to get irritated by the she by it. She starts to get loud in the restaurant. She gets mad. Sis gets mad. She gets up and she, she leaves. She's like, look here, I ain't got time for this shit. I can be going home working with some convicts that I know that I can goddamn tame. I'm not going to be sitting here and dealing with your shit and what the fuck you got going on. Sis gets up and she leaves. Cheryl goes outside after her and she's like, look here, you already know I'm not perfect. I was a stripper. I did pills. I did coke. I did all this, that, and the other. And I look where I am now. I'm a better person. I'm on my feet. She looked kind of skinny. You could tell was something going on with Cheryl. I was like, oh, when she said that, I was like, mm-hmm, right on the nose. I could see that. But... 
sis don't care. She don't want to hear. She like, look here, to hell with him, to hell with you, to hell with the goddamn both of y'all. I'm piecing the fuck out. And sis ends up leaving. Cheryl mad. She irritated now. Cheryl said, now sis is saying that, you know, now mom is a correctional officer. Now you got sister don't like her. Mama don't like him. They both correctional officers. And you got daddy that ain't trying to fuck with now one of them right now. Especially not Cheryl. Because she chasing after this goddamn dude. So child... Good luck, and he still ain't even met your damn kids, and you ready to marry this month? I was like, girl, she, she doing the most. All right, y'all. Next up, we got um Lizzie and Daniel. Ooh, this Moscato's fucking hitting. So <laughs> it's the morning after he proposed to her. Now, mind you, they're staying at the Destination Inn, and the Destination Inn room that they have is um a Paris theme. You know what I'm saying? They've been up goose and hunching like rabbits all goddamn night and she's just so goddamn happy but she's saying you know we got to pack it up we got to go back to the house and we have to figure out how we're going to tell your mom that we are now engaged now mind you mama thought she was buying a promise ring she didn't know she was buying a damn engagement ring now Lizzie wants to tell mama, but at this point, Daniel's like, I don't want to say nothing right now. You know, the way shit been going with me and her, I don't want to say nothing. I just want shit to be cool. We can tell her later on, right? They riding, get to the house. When they get there, the whole goddamn family is there. All the fucking Daniel family is there because they all there helping mama, like, what was that, repave? The, the the driveway or something like that, but the whole damn family is out there. So as soon as they pull up, Lizzie is like, oh shit, I wasn't counting on this. Maybe you're right. We don't need to say nothing to nobody right now. That's just going to be our little secret. Later on, we feel like it when we got a better time, then we're going to tell your mom that we're engaged, right? So Lizzie ends up going off, I guess, start getting the shovel or some shit so she can do her part. Just then, Daniel is bent over. He's working, looking at the tire. Mom comes up, and mom has grandma and grandpa with her. Now, of course, I'm sure mom already told grandma and grandpa that Daniel was going to give Lizzie this promise ring. So they're all like, you know, well, what did she say? Was she happy? Is she excited? He's like, what? About what? And she's like, about the ring. You know, like, how was he? He was like, yeah, you know. It's, it's a ring. It's a fucking ring. Like, don't worry about it. He was getting irritated. To me, he was giving himself away with that. I don't know if he's always anxious and irritable like that, but he just got really irritated really goddamn fast, right? So the next thing you know, mom is like, damn, you can just cool off. I just wanted to know how she was. Did she, was she happy? Like, what a reaction was, motherfucker. That's all I'm fucking asking you. This motherfucker gonna look at Lizzie's like, you know what? It's a good a time as any, right? Maybe we need to go ahead and say something about it, right? This motherfucker, and now Lizzie's trying to tell him, no, don't do it. Pump your brakes. Calm down. Out of spite, he says to his mom, well, uh, we're engaged. I asked her to marry me, and she said, yes, now we're engaged. Mama looking like, motherfucker, are you serious? But I was proud of mama because instead of turning up, she went over there and she gave Lizzie a hug. She was like, congratulations, you know, I don't know what the fuck just happened. I'm going to need a moment. But congratulations, she gives her a hug. Mama is shocked as hell. Daniel ended up telling his mama out of spite. I didn't like that. I did not like that. He told his mama that because he knew that that would piss his mama off. Now, you say your mama is crazy, but motherfucker, you are about 60%, probably even 30% of the reason why y'all have the relationship and y'all get into it the way that y'all do. So he ended up telling mama because he was mad at her child. I'm like, boy, hopefully their little relationship lasts and... <laughs> He don't fuck it up by doing the dumb shit that he been doing so far. Now, next up, y'all, we got Glorietta and Alex, right? Now, it's the next morning after they got to their argument the night before it was Valentine's. Valentine's, not Valentine's. I wish people would say that goddamn right. But he spent the night, he said, at Kato's house. Kato is his homeboy, his, his, his nigga. Thank God he didn't say it this damn episode. But he went and spent the night at his house because him and Glorietta got into it, so they was pissed off at each other, right? So the next morning, um, he ends up going to Glorietta's job. Now, as y'all know, she is like this car. She's a car enthusiast model. She's one of the pinup model girls and, you know, gets people in, helps with the sales and different things like that. He ends up going and popping up on her at her job. Now, she sees him. She's excited to see him, reaches out to give him a hug, and he's just kind of like... 
you know what I'm saying, kind of asshole with it, kind of nonchalant. Immediately, he starts to go into the same damn thing. You know, while I'm here, you know what I'm saying, I just need to know, you know, do you love me and why do you want to marry me? Once again, goes in with the same bullshit. Now, what it is, he's in his feelings about his ex, Angelina. So, he's looking for a reason to push Loretta away so that she'll break it off with his ass and he don't have to be the dickhead to do it his damn self. I don't like that. Alex, you a punk ass, pussy ass, wigger. For that, you can't even be straight up with this girl and tell her that you in love with somebody else and that you basically leading her ass on. And you was only leading her ass on when you was locked up because you needed some damn company because you obviously couldn't get in contact with your ex because she was getting her damn life together. That's some bullshit. That's some real ass bullshit. So he ends up getting into her with it at, I mean, getting into her at this, getting into it with her at this damn car. It's like a, um, what is it, like a car show, ends up getting into it with her there in front of all these white folks with this damn money, they arguing the shit, he, once again, he did that so he would have an excuse to, like I say, break it off with her, he trying to use this Jedi mind trick shit with her ass, and in a way, she kind of falling for it, because baby, had it been a bitch like me that's hip, go know the motherfucking game, like, look here, I don't know what kind of motherfucking games it is you trying to goddamn play, but nigga, if you trying to go out there and live your life, then fucking do it. But don't do this flip mode shit with me and think I'm not finna pick up on it. But y'all, that's neither here nor there. But once again, they get into it. He ends up hitting the buttons that he wanted to hit with her, and he ends up leaving from there. Child, she needs to leave his ass alone. Amber and Vince, y'all. Okay, so... They're on their way to the family reunion in Indiana. As you know, Amber got a travel a travel pass to go to this family reunion in Indiana to see her family. Vince is there going with her. She's still trying to play her part in this whole scamming on a fucking ass rich ass nigga scheme that her, her um, puppy and mama got going on, right? So she's trying to play her role. They end up getting down there to Indiana. She sees her family. She hasn't seen her family in years. We um, get to meet her brother, Tyler, and her sister, Aaron. Now, she introduces Aaron to Vince, and she goes out and reaches and hugs Vince. And she looks at her like, bitch, who the fuck is this? Same thing. We all thinking, like, what the fuck is this going on, right? So they sit down. Like, they're talking, doing, like, little family shit or whatever. Vincent is outside. He's talking with Nana and, you know, some of the other um, older members of the family. And so they're all asking, like, you know, so what are your plans? Do you plan on, you know, um... You moving um, to Atlanta, or do you plan on her moving to Vegas, or maybe y'all could both move to Indiana and be, you know, close to the family, this, that, and the other. Child, out of nowhere, Vincent breaks out and starts crying, saying how much he loves her and how, you know, they've had talks about that, but he just doesn't know where things are going to go. It was weird. I don't know if he was just playing that role or exactly what the fuck it was, but I was like, Vincent, ooh, stop. At the same time, she's on the inside of the house. She's talking with her brother and her sister. They're both telling her, like, look here, your nieces and nephews need you. So if you fuck it up this time, you, we not going to be around there for you, you know, to help you with nothing else. Amber does say if she get caught up in some bullshit again, it's going to be life for her. Life. Life. In prison. For some fraud shit. Oh, bitch, no, ma'am. No ma'am, no ham, no spam. I do not like green eggs and ham. Ain't no fucking way. But, you know, they have a little moment. They sort of break down. And I thought it was really... Amber needed to see that because Amber is in her confessional and she's crying saying that, you know, she realizes how much she hurt her family. She doesn't want to do that to them. She feels so bad for it. And hopefully this is something that can help her open her mind and see, bitch, you need to get your goddamn shit together. Now, later on, they're all outside. They're talking and um, Amber's mom ends up calling. Now, um, she puts her mom on speakerphone. Grandma gets on the phone. Uh, Nana, she gets on the phone and she's talking with um, Amber's mom. And she was like, so this guy, Vincent, that Amber bought over here? Mm -hmm, yeah, he's the one. He's a great guy. He's really, really special. Of course, that's what Vincent needed to hear because that just pumped up his head. The sister looking like, oh, what the fuck is going on with this? Amber looking like if y'all only fucking knew. So, child, I once again, I'm ready. Hopefully, we get to see Puppy get out of jail before this season is over so we get to get some more tea about what's going on with that whole situation. But, child, yeah, Vince would think he in there like swimwear. And Amber trying to think of a way to shake this motherfucker. Chai is crazy. Angela and Tony, y'all. <laughs> 
She got her lover home. Baby, she ready to get home. She ready to pounce and get on that doggone D, bitch. She been waiting on that vitamin D. You heard me? Now, Tony, uh, what's no, what's his name? Um, best friend Tommy ended up dropping him off at the house. Now, Tommy was like, look here, call me if you need me. I'm going to be ready to come through with sledgehammer, whatever else the hell it is you need me to do, right? She don't give a damn. She was just ready to get that doggone vitamin D up in her. That's all the hell she was goddamn worried about. So, she tells him, but like, you know, look here. Before that, before we get into all of that, let me know who the hell this Michelle chick was, right? So, he tells her that Michelle was some chick that he met at the job, not the other little, little baby girl that uh, she tried to jump on not too long ago when she put the taking voice on her ass, not her. It's a totally different chick named Michelle. First, he tries to lie and say they just wouldn't play basketball. She was like, look here, don't it? You want some of this hot pocket right here? You're going to have to tell the goddamn truth. Let me know what the fuck is going on. So he says that Michelle was a chick that he had met when he got fresh out of jail, which there was the first chick that paid attention to him, that hit on him. Nigga, you had Cheryl here this whole time waiting for you. She offered steak a blowjob. You went for a steak. So for you to sit here and say that you had nobody else hitting on you, she was the first chick that hit on you, nigga, nigga, please. That's a sorry ass, sob ass story. But you know what? He apologized for it, said he wasn't gonna do it no goddamn more. Child, Angela didn't care. Like Bonnie Blue would say, she want the day. She want the day, she want the day, she want the day. Bindy Blue, that's somebody else y'all need to be following on goddamn YouTube. Her reviews are fucking hilarious. Go follow Bindy Blue. But that's all she was worried about. As long as she got that apology, it felt sincere enough to her in that heart down there, that's all that mattered. Because, baby, they start kissing. Oh, they start making out. It was nasty as fuck. Next thing you know, she was like, you take me to the bedroom. Let's get it on, lover. Ooh. They went in the bedroom. I'm sure... It sounded like the mating call of two big burly ass grizzly bears in there while they was getting it on. I'm sure it sounded fucking scary, animalistic, because her voice is deeper than his. So her, uh, 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 I'm sure that did not sound pleasant. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to know nothing the fuck about it. I'm sure it was very goddamn nasty. Y'all, so the next morning, she wake up. Baby, that D was so good to her ass. She was like, look here. Look here, Tony. I got something for you, baby. Follow me outside. She takes him outside, shows him, surprises him with the motorcycle that she bought him the first time that he got out when he went and cheated on her ass with a whole nother female. Now that she done got the D, all of that bullshit done went out the window. She takes him back out back shows him this new motorcycle that she bought for him i'm thinking angela what in the fuck is wrong with you girl you too old for this you too old for this but that's neither here nor there she's happy he uh, of course is happy as hell she tells him that you know my sister is coming my sister wants to meet you so you need to make sure that you own your shit that you know you need to be you know, providing and staying out of trouble and doing this, that, and the other. Now, y'all, they sitting down at the table, table and talking. This motherfucker, Tony, gonna have the nerve to say that she needs to appreciate the sacrifices that he has made to be with her as well. He basically says, when I got out, I came here to you. I'm finna be working and providing as well, and you finna be getting live-in dick, so you need to be appreciating me too. She was like, nigga, what? I was like, nigga, what? Girl, excuse me. Okay, you know what I'm saying? This motherfucker gonna say he got the, he gonna say he give it three months. And in three months, if she's still on this whoop-de-whoop -whoop shit that she doing, basically telling him what he needs to do, what he needs to be appreciating all this and the other shit, that he gonna leave. That lets you know right there, his heart ain't in it. He need three months to get on his feet and get his shit together so he can end up leaving Angela. And bitch, if you take him back after that, you's dumb as hell. Moving on from that. Lacey and Shane. So y'all, they end up going cake tasting. They're gonna end up having a beach-themed uh, wedding. They're getting married in two weeks. So 
all of a sudden, Shane is like this culinary arts guy. He's telling what he wants with the cake and how he wants to decorate it, what flavor he wants, all this and the other. I was like, oh, well, go ahead and get it then, boy. So later on, she ends up telling him, well, after they're done cake tasting, she tells him that she's going to go dress shopping with her homegirl. What's the homegirl name? I think her homegirl name is Miranda. She's going to go dress shopping with her when really this bitch going to go meet with John. You ain't learned your damn lesson child she ends up going and meets with john after she done sit up here and lie to shane saying that she's gonna go dress shopping look here you already fucking up and you ain't even got damn marriage yet she ends up going and meeting with john and of course they're sitting up there flirting back and forth with each other he's saying that you know he of course he doesn't want her to be with him she ends up telling him that they're getting married in two weeks of course he like don't marry this punk ass backstreet boy baby similac smelling ass motherfucker right here when you need to be with me he's saying that she's gonna end up cheating on him with him any damn way which kind of i see that happening i really do but she claims she needs to know if he is the father of Mar marlo her second child so that was her only reason being there so that he could take that paternity test so that she could see what's going on with it she said she'll let him know in two to three days what's going on with that but child she gonna end up fucking him she is i can already see it she already seemed like she fucking up with it and i can see her messing around with them that's what I'm just saying. Later on, I want to say that she does end up marrying Shane, but I don't think that she fucked up in some kind of way before she ended up marrying him. But y'all, that was pretty much the end of the episode right there. Nope, I didn't miss anything. Oh, she does say that she is still physically attracted to, to John. So that's another reason right there that lets me know she gonna end up fucking around on Shane with John. It's only a matter of time. If you seen it, if it was anything that I missed, please do not forget to drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.